Russia's warships retreat from Crimea's waters as attacks intensify in the Ukraine. That downed Chinese balloon wasn't exactly for spying. It was a trial balloon. Subprime auto defaults on path toward 2008 crisis levels. The White House proposes a 30% tax on electricity that is being used for crypto mining. How Kevin McCarthy stunned the White House and dealt a critical blow to President Biden. And Schumer got roasted for saying nobody's taking away your gas stove just months before New York banned gas stoves. If you guys are new to the channel, please consider subscribing to the channel. And while you guys are at it, go ahead and smash that like button. I really, really would appreciate that. So guys, Russia warships retreat from Crimea's waters as attacks intensify in the Ukraine. So Russia has moved most of its Black Sea Fleet warships from its primary base in Crimea to safer waters in Russian territory. This at least comes from Ukrainian military intelligence officials. Major General, deputy of the Ukraine's military intelligence, said during a Wednesday interview with the Kiev that Kremlin had decided to relocate the vessels out of fear of missile strikes. Now, the official headquarters of the Black Sea is located in Sevastopol, the largest city in the the largest city in Crimea and the sites of multiple drone strikes in recent weeks. Now, is this a sign that Russia is literally being crushed by the Ukraine or is the Ukraine actually being annihilated by Russia? But the Ukraine is attempting to save face and appear as though they're still strong uh, in, in front of the media. I'm going to leave that up to you guys to decide on that. What do you actually think is true? What do you think is actually happening here? That down Chinese balloon wasn't exactly for spying. It was a trial balloon. Now, this comes in. This is an, an inside perspective on what has actually happened here. Was it a weather balloon? Was it a spy balloon? No. I guess that Chinese balloon sighted over Montana and Missouri months back and shot down off the coast of South Carolina by an F-22 Raptor was a trial balloon. So multiple theories still exist regarding whether this was actually a weather balloon. Was it a spy balloon? Yeah, I already know pretty much where you guys stand on that. I think we went into a lot of details on that on a previous video. Subprime auto defaults are on a path toward 2008 crisis levels. It's not looking good out here, folks. In one chart, the surge is easy credit during the pandemic. Government stimulus payments and skyrocketing car prices have all begun to bite borrowers with lowest credit scores. Subprime borrowers who financed used cars at record price levels in recent years have been acting more stressed out during this 2008 global financial crisis, uh, or I should say more more stressed than during the 2008 global financial crisis, even though the labor market is still being resilient. Now, while inflation and higher interest rates, thanks to the Federal Reserve, as you guys know, we talked about this the other day, Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell announced another 25 basis point rate hike. The federal funds rate is now sitting between 5 and 5.25 percent for the federal funds rate. And while inflation and higher interest rates has been eroding the paychecks, many people live in paycheck to paycheck here in the United States, U.S. consumers, quote, it is very apparent to us that it is negatively affecting subprime borrowers who tend to have lower credit scores and lower incomes more harshly than others. And this is how it works, folks. You know, you got the top down economy, you got the bottom up economy. And in this case, when it comes to uh, the Fed's attack on the economy, trying to bring down inflation, raising interest rates, it is the from the bottom up being affected by these uh, by these decisions from the Fed first and foremost. Now, the duo pointed to a 60 plus day delinquency hitting 9% in March for borrowers with credit scores of 550 and below when looking at subprime auto loans that were packaged into asset backed securities or bond deals. So, yeah, Nancy Pelosi reaches $700,000 in gas guzzling private jet payments despite pushing green energy. Representative Nancy Pelosi paid tens of thousands of dollars more from her campaign budget for jet fuel, private jet fuel, mind you, despite promoting climate change policies that take aim at fossil fuel industries. Nancy Pelosi, a longtime backer of green energy policies, came under fire for her private jet 
travel as she led House Democrats in passing President Joe Biden's Inflation Reduction Act, which is a sweeping climate and energy bill that may ultimately cost taxpayers up to $1.2 trillion over the next 10 years. The Congresswoman's campaign paid over $43,600 in March alone to the to the charter aircraft company Advanced Aviation for private jet travel bringing bringing her total jet expenses to almost seven hundred thousand dollars since late 2020 wow so you're pushing for clean energy you're pushing for this whole green initiative but yet you're blowing hundreds of thousands of dollars on jet fuel and the like go figure guys right so they want to take away our gas powered cars they want to take away our classics that you keep in the garage and you pull them out on the weekends they want to take away your gas vehicles and leave you with, let's just say, EVs, electric vehicles. Does that make you happy? Meanwhile, they're flying around in their jets, burning up and creating more CO2s in their one jet than 100,000 Americans can create in their individual cars. But yet we're the problem, right? House proposes, the White House proposes a 30% tax on electricity used for crypto mining. The Biden administration wants to impose a 30% tax called the Digital Asset Mining Energy or DAME exercise or XC's tax on the electricity used for cryptocurrency mining. It explained it wants to tax crypto mining companies because they aren't paying for the full cost that they impose to others. I guess this is more in line with the whole green initiative, uh, including environmental pollution and high energy prices. So the question is posed. Does mining cryptocurrency use that much power? Well, in April, the New York Times published a report detailing the energy used by the 34 large scale Bitcoin miners in the United States. Just those 34 operations together use the same amount of electricity as three million households. <laughs> wow. OK, now, if the proposal becomes law, the government will impose the XC's tax in phases. It would start by adding a 10% tax on miners' electricity use in the first year, 20% in the second year, 30% in the third year onward. <laughs> wow. Those taxes are going to wipe these people out. So House Speaker Kevin McCarthy stunned the White House and dealt a devastating blow to President Biden. So House Speaker Kevin McCarthy passed a debt ceiling bill that's going to raise the limit and cut spending a feat that top Democrats and officials within the White House reportedly did not think that Kevin McCarthy could actually pull off. So the House passed this limit, the save, it's called the Limit Save Grow Act of 2023 in late April. Now, this bill will raise the debt ceiling by $1.5 trillion through March 31st of 2024, whichever comes first. However, the bill includes a number of conservative economic provisions criticized by the White House and top Democrats in both chambers. So, uh, yeah, aides and lawmakers told uh, told the news under anonymity that they were astonished that Kevin McCarthy could even pass this debt limit measure within uh, last week. And uh, even more and even more were taken aback when Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen said that the United States could very well default on its debt as early as June 1st. Yeah. So the United States could be defaulting on its debt. Americans with credit scores under 600, 600 uh, points, Equifax, TransUnion, Experian, they are seeing record high automobile rep repositions, repos taking place. Um, I hope you guys are getting prepared. I hope you guys are stockpiling cash among other resources. Uh, it's getting real out here, folks. Chuck Schumer got roasted for saying nobody is taking away your gas stoves just months before New York banned the very gas stoves that he said not to worry about. Senate Majority Leader, Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer uh, was roasted this week after his state banned natural gas hookups in new buildings over comments that he made earlier this year downplaying the threat of such bans. It's just funny because some people say, you know, I'm, I cover stories and we make these predictions about things that are likely to happen. And, you know, inevitably I get these comments. Well, you said, you know, in 30 days this is going to happen. And it's like, look, these things happen, right? And 
They may not happen exactly on the day, but they end up happening. And here's just more proof of that. So, quote, he says, nobody is taking away your gas stove. So this is what uh, Schumer tweeted on February the 3rd, quote, shameless and desperate MAGA Republicans are showing us that they will cook up any distraction to divert from real issues the American people want solved, like the debt ceiling, end quote. So what do you guys think? You ready to turn in your gas stoves? Are you ready for the government to come knocking on your door telling you to, you know, hand over the gas stove and uh, force you to go out there and buy an electric stove? I don't think they're going to do that. I'm just messing with you guys. But seriously, like, you know, I feel like sometimes the attempt to reach this this iconic stage of clean energy, it can create more environmental damage than anything else like why would you you know throw away a perfectly good stove and if you donate it that just means that someone else is going to use the gas stove so you know you can't get rid of it and not harm the economy or excuse me and not harm the environment unless the gas stove has literally failed and you know if you bought a gas stove in the last 10 years chances are it's still working just fine so comment down below, you guys rushing out there to buy some electric appliances or you happy with your gas appliances? I know me personally, you know, um, a gas stove, the food just takes, tastes a whole lot better. Speaking of food, I don't know if it's just me, but I went to Sam's Club uh, for the last several months purchasing certain items, specifically chicken. And I don't know if it's me or if it's anybody else, but I've noticed that since we've been cooking this particular chicken, and I don't know the name of the brand uh, of this chicken. I, I I can't remember. But anyway, it seems like it's only lasting like, it, it seems like it expires in my refrigerator after I've cooked it way sooner than it used to be. So I don't know if it was just me. And I thought it was like one packet package of chicken doing that. But I've noticed this pattern repeatedly over the last several months. And with the price of food being so much higher than it has been, especially the price of chicken and eggs and whatnot, um, you know, that was something that I did notice. So I didn't know if that was something that you guys might have picked up on. Let me know what you guys are thinking in the comments down below. Again, if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing, drop a like for the channel, share this video with a friend, and I will see you guys on the next one.